but I'm not seeing the link for now. Okay, so folks, um, tonight I have a very important guest in studio with me. Um, but before I introduce him, I just want to big up uh, a police officer, um, Inspector. Okay, I could see the link now, folks. There it is. I could see it now. All right. Yeah. So, one second, folks. I just want to bear with me. Just want to make sure everything is working properly. All right. Just this, this, almost there, almost there. All right, here we go. All right, so I want to, to send a special shout out to, first of all, you know, the usual um, intro, our acting um, police commissioner, Mr. Ronald Philip. Good night to you, the executive of the um, Royal Silicia Police Force, Gazette officers, uh, inspectors, uh, sergeants, corporals, constables, um, both senior and junior. Good night to you, special police constables. Good night to you, special reserve officers, former police officers, Sergeant uh, Sebastiana Charles, I saw you earlier today in my community. Good night to you, ma'am. Um, City Police, how are you guys doing? Good night to you. Our brothers and sisters in law enforcement, um, bodily correctional facility, uh, fire service, port police, customs, all police officers, sorry, all security officers, around the island i like to say good night to you those of you in the chat finally i'm in folks um titania c antoine uh, my niece good night to you you dr alexander and john blast warner i like to say good night to you um collins we have a picture of of, of the officer on the big up mr Shivan matthew yeah okay um, I want to just give him a special shout out because Inspector Shivan Matthew, folks, um, he is in charge of the Criminal Investigations Department in Castries. And some time ago, he, he won a Top Caribbean Crime Fight Award where he received a trophy, a certificate, and a prize of 5,000 US dollars. Well, um, Mr. Matthew, Inspector Matthew, decided to donate um, his prize earnings to three institutions that are very close to his heart, namely the Marian Home of Leslie Land, Castries, which provides care and shelter for the elderly, the Children's Home at Cicero, which supports orphans and vulnerable children, and the Sufre Comprehensive Secondary School, which is, which is his alma mater. After each donation, the organizations express gratitude to uh, Mr. Chauvin Matthew for his generous donation. They express how the donations would make a major impact in their operations and continued programs. Okay, so um, eventually we'll get a couple of pics coming up on the screen. But Mr. Matthew, Inspector Matthew, you know you have um, you have adopted the moniker that is a cop who cares. And my brother, by your actions, you have definitely shown that you are a cop who cares. So I'd like to big you up, my brother. Respect. Sometime later, we will show those pics on the screen. But without further ado, because we don't have much time, let me introduce my guest for this evening, our um, president of the Police Welfare Association, um, Mr. Cameron Law. Mr. Cameron Law, good night to you, my brother. Brother Dan, good evening. <coughs> How are you doing? I'm, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, you've, you've been on the Police Inside Show before, not just as a guest, but you have also hosted it. Yes, I but have. But tonight you are in um, a, a night, I wouldn't say hot, because inside here is cool, <laughs> a cool seat. <laughs> <laughs> so without further ado, my brother, because we have our first break coming up at quarter past the hour, I have some questions to you. Mr. Law, would you, do you have anything to say before I start um, my questioning? Good night to um, St. Lucia, good night to <clears throat> you know, my family, my daughter, I sent her the link, I hope she's, she might take some time to watch, I know she was studying before I, I left. Mm -hmm. um, good night to my fellow police officers, good night to the executive of the police force, the executive of the Police Welfare Association and you know all those who are tuned in. Today I heard you mention Miss Warner, 
Mm -hmm. um, I know this lady very, very well. She's from the community of Labry, so good night to her. And of course, I'm sure to see her when I get down to Labry. I always see her, you know, so excellent. good night, everybody. All right, excellent, my brother. So, Mr. President, is it okay if I address you that way? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so Mr. President of Welfare, um, for those who don't know, what, what is or are the objectives of the, what do we? the Police Service Association here? Yeah, what? Okay. Um, if someone who doesn't know what the Welfare Association is about. The Welfare Association um, basically is there to make representation on behalf of police officers from the ranks of constable to... to um, Inspectors. Of course, we also represent our special police constables, mm -hmm. you know, um, if they have grievances. That is, we do not represent persons or police officers from the ranks of assistant superintendent to the commissioner of police. Oh, I see. That these people or these police officers are represented or they, are, they fall under the public service commission. Commission. So okay. the Police Welfare Association does not make representation for them in any way. Um, of course, the commissioner has responsibility for police officers from the rank of inspector mm -hmm. right down to constable. constable. And so the Welfare Association, therefore, only represents police officers from special police constable to inspector. Excellent. Um, Mr. President, there is speculation as to the, the validity of your appointment as president of the Police Welfare Association. Um, can you lay this to rest? Some officers, individuals, even in the, the social media sphere have said that your, your appointment as welfare president is, is not valid. And that I hijacked you. Know? Oh, you use, use oh, oh they use the word hijacked. You could use the character. I, I, I'm trying to be very No, 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 nice that's fine. We, we're going to have yes. frank discussion. Yes, that you, you hijacked. You know that's who yes. I am, so yes. you can speak frankly and mm -hmm. say what it is. So can you clear the air on this? Um, okay, on <clears throat> February 8th of this year, nominations were opened by the former executive for elections of the Police Welfare Association Ex, um, executive and persons were asked to nominate you know who they thought would be interested or who they thought would be good candidates for the various branch boards um, these nominations were or the notice was sent out through social media and notices were placed on various in various locations um, around the police departments um, I could say that I received, you know, the notice through social media. I saw it myself. Mm -hmm. The nominations were actually closed on the 13th of March, you know, from the 8th of February to the 13th of March, which is just a little over a month. After nominations were closed, um, the, the commissioner of police was informed of that. She was also informed, which is Ms. Ms. That would be Mrs. Bellius. Bellius? Yes. Okay. She was also informed of the nominees in writing. And that happened on the 16th of March, mm -hmm. right? Um, of course, in some of the branch boards, the numbers were not sufficient in terms of to constitute the branch board. Oh, I see. As a result, the then executive would have informed or sought permission from the commissioner, which is Mr. Spellius. So that would be the outgoing executive? The outgoing then? executive. Okay. To dissolve the 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 um the executive to allow for the branch boards to form the mm -hmm. new executive the okay was given oh, I for see. them to dissolve I see. the outgoing executive mm -hmm. so this happened mm -hmm. the branch boards at the time <clears throat> the branch boards would have selected their nominees to go up to form the central committee when that happened a gazetted officer um Overs oversaw mm -hmm. the, the, the election of okay. the Central Committee. Okay. So persons on the Central Committee, there were eight persons who ascended from the branch boards to the Central Committee. A gazetted officer was present, and that is mandated. That is how it is always done. A gazetted officer must be present to oversee the elections of the Central Committee. Of course, nominations among the eight persons who, the, who ascended to the Central Committee happened. And um, persons were elected to the various positions. Of course, I assumed the role of chairperson of that 
committee. And this is how the, this executive came into being. Came to be. So to suggest that, you know, there was any form of hijacking, everything was done, everything was documented. The commissioner was well aware of what was happening. And the gazetted officer who sat and oversaw the elections of the central committee wrote his, um, the results of that election, wrote or sent his report to the commissioner of police. He also forwarded the current executive a report of you know the central committee and the elections. So, so you 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 understand, Mr. President, why some people will um, are, are concerned or worried if something went no, wrong. No, I don't understand. You don't understand no, I don't, they, so. because what what they're saying, <clears throat> what they're saying is that maybe I will turn on the AC during the break. What they're saying is that. Um, they're accustomed of having a, a, a full-fledged gathering of members where members could now cast certain ballots, etc., for individuals to go up to the branch boards and etc. But that, did that full ever happen? Full-fledged when and where? Here's what, here's what mm -hmm. happened in, in the past. Mm -hmm. In the past, and it must be, and when I say the past, it's over five years. Yes. Persons gathered at the police auditorium, the old police canteen. Right, right. This was our meeting place. Mm -hmm. And at the canteen, only the persons who were there were able to be nominated and vote. That's right. That changed sometime in 2014, 15. I was the chairperson at the time. I felt, and I spoke to my executive, that it could not be fair that 150 people out of 1,000 members... Okay. Come to the auditorium and select an executive to oversee the affairs of a thousand people. That was brought to the membership. You may have been there. Yes, there was, I was much there. debate over I that. I was there. There was much debate over that. There was I much debate that. over that. Yeah, really that was brought to, to the membership. And the voting. membership accepted the new yes. system of election. Yes. So nominations then would have gone out prior to, you know, for about two or three weeks. This time it went out for over a month. Okay. Persons would have been nominated, and there would be a set date for the elections. There would have been ballot boxes placed in various locations around the island. A gazetted officer would have, been pres would have presided over this election, going around with the ballot box, allow persons to vote, and then the ballots would have been counted at the end of the day. The branch boards would have been formed, and of course a gazetted officer again would have sat down with the persons who ascended from the branch boards to the central committee, much like it happened this time, this around. time around. What happened is, and when the nominations went out, for the various, like the constable's right. branch board, you had only seven people. In other words, people showing interest. Right. <laughs> you had only seven, which is okay. the requisite number to okay. constitute the branch board. Okay. So that happened. The inspector's branch board, of course, mm -hmm. will, you would know. Mm -hmm. I've never mm -hmm. had, um, as far as I can remember, Enough. So we have always had to call an inspector to serve. So all of this, all of this was it, um, brought to the attention of the commissioner. And the outgoing executive sought the permission of the commissioner to dissolve the executive. It was granted, they dissolved, the new executive was sat, elections, and here you are. So nothing was hijacked. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to take our very first break. Stay tuned, folks, to Police Insight. Here's your first task. Let's see how you do. I need you to renew the registration on these vehicles. Here are the documents and the company credit card. Now, I know the lines are long, but I expect you back here before 12. Yes, sir. No problem. There's a new and easier way to do things now. Everything I need is right here with DigiGolf. All your vehicle-related services are right at your fingertips from anywhere with DigiGolf. From vehicle registration to application and renewal of route permits and more. With DigiGolf, you have convenient access to vehicle services using a desktop, computer, a laptop, or other mobile device. We're making it easier online and getting you off the line. Register with DigiGolf today. Here you go, sir. Vehicle registration renewed. All you have to do is pick up the stickers. How? 
Welcome to the Digical Era. If you need help accessing Digital, visit one of our service bureau offices below. Digital, serving people and businesses with that island love. The Carnival Planning and Management Committee invites you to the National Carnival Pageant, where 10 dazzling Carnival Queen hopefuls will stage an exquisite display of beauty, poise, charisma, and talent. Join the spectacle of color and artistry, vying for the coveted title, Akaya Chico, Miss Labry Cooperative Credit Union, Aliel Fontenelle, Miss Harbor Club, Shadine Leonti, Miss Massey Stores, Maria Edmund, Miss Caribcation, Tyler Dilsuk, Miss St. Lucia Investments, Leanna Lewis, Miss Pierre Marcel, Shanice Butcher, Miss Caribbean Galaxy Real Estate, Chantel Edward, Miss First National Bank, Janae Perrineau, Miss Fix, and Burnell St. Rose, Miss POSL Digital. Tickets available from the cell outlets island wide. Witness the crowning of the 2023 National Carnival Queen on Saturday, July 1st at the Pavilion on Rodney Bay from 8 p.m. Lucian Carnival. Answer the call to color. Welcome back to <clears throat> Police Insight. Your host here, Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte. In studio is um, the president of the Police Welfare Association, Mr. Cameron Law, as we continue our interview this evening. Um, Mr. President, would you mind, because I know there are lots of members watching, would you mind giving us a status of our distress fund? Uh, um, you remember 2013 when I became... Mm -hmm. Um, chairperson of the um, Police Welfare Association. I think you and I served before that. Yes. I was vice president, you were the yes. PRO. PRO. And um, I became president in 2013. And I went about saying to the members, I always said that, and it is documented. And my what I said then, I kept saying the distress fund is in distress. If you remember clearly, mm -hmm. I kept saying that. that every meeting I went to, I said, I said, members, we need to find a way to remedy this problem. When in 2013, when I assumed the role of president, when I received the information from the bank, that account was at zero, zero, zero in 2013. At that time, we had five death applications at 5000 each, which would be $25,000. Yeah. <coughs> Thankfully, the month was just ending, and so we were able to pay these applications with what came in. This continued. Um, we brought to the attention of the members we need to raise the contributions. Members have been reluctant to raise contributions. contributions. From then, and you, you can attest to it, you have been at almost every meeting. Mm -hmm. Where this is raised and members are asked. Assuming the role of the chairmanship now, when I <clears throat> ask, um, I could tell you that, you know, um, I have not, or our executive, this executive, does not have control of the distress fund. Is that so? We do not have control of it, as everything goes to the police credit union. Okay. All we do. All we do as an executive is provide the credit union with the names of the persons where the checks <coughs> are to whom okay. the checks are supposed to be written. Mm -hmm. The checks are written by the credit union, sent to uh, the Police Welfare Association Secretariat, and it is disbursed from there. So we do not have, as I, as I, speak, as I said, we do not have control of it. I don't know what is the status of the account, okay. how much is there. All I know is, at the end of the month, we forward the names of the persons Interesting. to be paid, paid claim, yeah, and the 
credit union would make that happen. You know, um, can you give us a, a status on the um, services of the immigration department? Um, uh, are your members satisfied thus far with what's happening or the, the, the latest um, procedures? Another another sub point, and you know, you know, sometimes when the immigration department is, is brought up, and um, I'm asked a question, I will tell you, immigration is immigration. This department and the issues that the department is facing has been um, this has been ongoing for two years, if not more. You understand? We have had the executives before me and before this one has had meetings, they have had walkthroughs, they have had a quality test done. Um, as a matter of fact, at the first, when it first started, the uh, former commissioner, um, Mrs. Pelius, mm -hmm. was in charge of immigration. She had a walkthrough with the Welfare Association then, the executive then. And so this, this problem has persisted for quite some time. And you know when people speak and they say, um, but why are you doing this now? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and I know, why are you doing this now? And Cameron is up to this and up to that and the Welfare Association is, don't tell me that a problem that has persisted for two years, I was not there. And I come in, people are falling sick. Hospitalizations, you know, um, diagnosed with lung issues, respiratory issues that I should not make representation on behalf of these people to ensure that they get what they get a better place. You understand? Now um, we met with we met with um, at some point we met with the Minister of Home Affairs, we met with um, the officer in charge of immigration and we came to an agreement that certain conditions would be Put in place so that the staff would spend as little time as possible in there. That was done on a new location that was being um, retrofitted for immigration to move. As we speak, they were supposed to have moved within six weeks. They are still at the old building. Um, persons are still falling sick. <laughs> and, you know, I had, and, and it's, it's, it's sad, it is really sad that. Um, Things are happening, but the Welfare Association does not even know that it's happening. You know, and we had this meeting. So I'm going to say, and as I would have inquired from the members there, they're still, <coughs> you know, in a lot of distress in terms of the condition. It is still distressing to them. Although, um, from what I'm being told, they've been, they've been um, additional staff has been brought on to ensure that, you know, the work of the immigration department continues. And there's additional and staff? Yeah, additional I staff. I believe also um, additional hours? Uh, additional available. hours, yes. I think the, mm -hmm. there's a night shift. Okay. So with the backlog and all of these things, you know, that would be able, to, the, the immigration department would be able to function a little more efficiently. I see. But as it pertains to the movement, that has not happened. And of course, we would be inquiring as to why it has not happened and what is the status of the movement of the immigration department. Okay, excellent. Mr. President, I have, some, I have a lot of questions for you. <laughs> Ask away. You know, I, I, I um, said to you, when you speak truth. Yes, when you speak truth, you, you're not you, concerned. That's right. The, we have, um, there's supposed to be a, a, a police parking lot, yes. uh, 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 am I correct? You're correct. In, in the, 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 where the old central yes, station and yes. world old gallery canteen. And canteen. Right. What's the status of that? Because um, we've seen a lot of vehicles parking there, so the officers want to know. When are we going to st start, start the business? Um, <coughs> I was hoping that we would have started two months ago. Okay. Because when we came in as a new executive, we found the project was already there. The Prime Minister had given the association the spot to, you know, um, create a parking lot for as long as the spot remains vacant until it is ready to be developed into <coughs> um, what is decided or they would have decided to put there. And... Um, I did, you know, get some work done along with the executive. We, you know, put a few things together. We had to call the gentleman. He came in. He assisted in spreading, you know, some material on, on the upper part 
so that we could get solid ground for vehicles to park. Um, that has happened. What we have, the only hiccup is that um, we need a hut for the, the, the a booth. Okay. Really. Um, there was a booth a little lower down Chesterfield. Chesterfield. Okay. We're trying to get, you know, that booth and we were hoping that we'd have met with the commissioner by now to ask to and use that, has that not booth. Happened? It has not happened. Okay. So we're going to um, we'll attempt to speak with the acting commissioner to mm -hmm. see whether he would allow us to use it the booth down there because it has been vacant for a number of years. If um, if not, we will we have already approached, you know, another entity to see how best we could get funding to put a booth there so that the parking lot could start and operate on a daily basis. Um, I see. That is the whole lot. But the ground is ready. Mm -hmm. The only hiccup is the booth. Yeah, and, and I know a lot of citizens of Castries are oh, yeah. definitely happy, very happy for, for that space. They are happy. A lot, of, a lot them of them A lot of them have said to me that we will continue to come here even when you have started and operating. So, and Two minutes before our next break, Mr. President, let me ask you a question. Hopefully you can answer that quickly. Um, are you aware of the, the status of um, promotions in the organization? Um, as you know, we will... Um, I think the last promotions, there was a, a guideline, a process guideline in terms of um, what police officers had to go through. But I don't know if, you, if you're aware in terms of if the current executive will be following that guideline or whatever the case may be. If the current executive, <clears throat> I don't know. I, I know that the, the, the last process mm -hmm. was supposed to, have have, supposed to have had a lifespan of five years. Oh, I see. Okay. From what I'm being told, okay. it was supposed to have had a lifespan of five years. Okay. I'm also being told that those persons who are being promoted now mm -hmm. are within, well within this. The, the last, the process? Spot. Yes. Okay. So this is the information that I have. That, um, that you receive. You know, um, and I did not receive that information from the executive mind. Okay, okay. You know, I, I did inquire through somebody quickly when I realized the question was going to come mm -hmm, on. Mm -hmm. So um, that is what is happening. If anybody has a grievance, you know, they could always take it up, you know, um, with the, the executive of the police force. They mm -hmm. could also ask us because we, as the Police Welfare Association, I think we're, we're forbidden to make representation in, terms, in matters of promotions okay, and okay. so on. So um, it's something that they can take up. That has happened before. Mm -hmm. uh, you have had a gentleman who believed he was aggrieved by way of him not being promoted when he believed he should have been promoted. He did take the matter to the court. There was an injunction, remember this? I remember that. Quite some time there was an years, injunction, yes. right. And, yeah. you know, when it was resolved, he was promoted. He was promoted. And we were able to continue with promotion. So, so presence has been set. It has been set. <laughs> now, mind you, the Commissioner of Police reserved the right under the Constitution to promote. To promote. From yes. special police constable yes. to inspector. We need to make that so clear. Even if we have a guideline, the Commissioner he or of she Police. still has that. He has right. that right to okay. do that. Okay. So he could. At any time, you know, promote anybody, you know. So, um, like I said, if anybody has a grievance in terms of the promotion process and what's happening, they're free to take it up. Okay, folks, we are going to take our second break for tonight's show. Please stay tuned to Police Insight on Choice TV. Carnival party starts here. The music, the pageantry, the revelry and costume, the fets, everything carnival is right here on Mass Attack Live. 
Fridays at 9 p.m. Only on Choice TV. Your choice for Lucian Carnival 2023. Mass Attack Live. You may not know it, but telecommunications is a significant part of your everyday life. It involves a range of telecommunications issues, licenses, regulations, legislation, and expertise. Telecommunications impacts directly on the national economy. Something as simple as handheld radios used in various applications need frequency authorization. And even wireless microphones use frequencies that have to be managed. The cell phone number that you use was authorized by the NTRC through a numbering plan. So a set of numbers are assigned to each service provider and to each island. This is where the National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission NTRC comes in. The NTRC forms part of the regulatory machinery in which ECTEL, the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, provides policy direction and acts in the capacity of a technical repository. The NTRC is appointed by the Minister of Telecommunications. There is so much more the NTRC is involved with. Feel free to visit our website or to call our office for additional information. Telecommunications is an integral part of our lives and the NTRC is the entity that protects your interest. The National Telecommunications Regulatory Commission ensuring standards in an evolving technological world. Thank you for staying tuned to Police Insight on Choice Television. Um, hey, no feedback, Mr. Coins in my Thank you so much. Um, Mr. President, we're into our second half. Questions get tougher now. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> the truth. Okay. Um, Mr. President, the, the Police Welfare Association once sold um, raffle tickets for the price of a vehicle. Okay. And those tickets were not just sold to police officers, but also to the citizenry at large. Um, can you give us an update on this venture? Um. No, I cannot give you an update. As a matter of fact, <clears throat> I did not even remember of a raffle, you know, being done. Um, so no, I, I cannot give you an update. And um, this was probably two executives ago. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. if I, two executives ago, so two executives would have gone by and this current executive. Mm -hmm. So um, that was not brought up. So probably the old, the last executive probably didn't even mm -hmm. have that information. But, but you would have remembered that because you mm -hmm. were on the committee at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You were, so I might as well ask you the question. Mm -hmm. Even the question that you're asking me, <laughs> I think I should be asking you. <laughs> well, you know? um, after I left the, the executive, um, the, the, the Police Welfare Association, and now I've become the guest here, folks. After I left the Police Welfare Association, I think that was about uh, an executive ago, this situation continues coming up. And sadly, one of the um, main proponents of that venture, which was a former president, that would be Mr. Travis Chico, um, would have been the one to probably, um, probably answer that question in all honesty. But one would think that certain things like that would have been passed on to the incoming executives, but now you're stating that you have no No, I have absolutely no knowledge on that. Okay. And like I said, uh, two executives ago, so um, there's something that I could inquire Please about. Do. I will definitely do that, and um, I will see how best I could, you know, update. Okay, excellent. Um, when last have you seen Mr. Chico, by the way? Um, well, I, need, I need to, honestly, I need to say congratulations to to um, Mr. Chico. Mr. Chico is now in the U.S. He just completed uh -huh. his master's in, I think, forensic psychology. Excellent, you excellent. Know? So congratulations to you, Mr. Chico. I know you always watch the program. And I think, you know, it is something to be very, very proud of as a police officer, one, a laborian, two. And, um, you know, great things lie ahead for you. I'm sure you're somebody, you, you're very, very strong. You know, you're very persistent. And I know that you have 
big goals and dreams for yourself. So I, I congratulations. Mr. President, the, the post of President of Welfare, um, whoever who, who has this post has to be seen as one who is objective and fair and representative of a body of individuals, mm -hmm. no matter what political persuasion, creed, sex, whatever the case may be. Some believe that your appointment as PWA president is a political ploy to undermine and give unnecessary pressure to the current administration. Some have even stated, even on social media, that you were once tipped to be a candidate of the current opposition um, party. What say you to those statements? Because it is being discussed among your membership. Okay. Um The, you're correct that the role of the president of the Police Welfare Association must be seen to be impartial. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Throughout my, my tenure, past and now, and we could go back in history, and I often ask that question because we're in chat groups together as police officers. If one person could say where I have at any one point, you know, taken any political stance or spoken any political language or brought the Welfare Association into disrepute by my actions, you know, which would be leaning on one political party or the other, then I would be the first person to resign. You know, I would be the first person to resign. So um, as I would have said to police officers, you know, I know and we all know of, of you know, police officers who deal into, into politics, they support the party, they, they open, they're very, very open about it. They have been on the executives before. They have, they, they, they're all over the place as police officers. Are you saying to me that because a police officer or an individual supports one party or has a bias, mm -hmm that they cannot function in the capacity of president of the Police Welfare Association? Are you saying to me that because you will go and vote on election day, but you will vote for a particular political party, that you should not be the chairman of the Police Welfare Association? And I dare say, and I've said it before, that anybody who thinks that because one person supports one political party or the next, and we're speaking of politics, it, it came in, that they cannot or should not function mm -hmm. on an executive or in a leadership role. This reflects directly on the person who thinks so. Because if, if you believe that because one person supports a political party, they should not function, it says that you would not be able to, to function and you would express your bias or your bias will come into the role that you have assumed. Let's look at now. The Welfare Association, the executive that I lead, have done absolutely nothing to put unnecessary pressure. We have not spoken any language that would suggest that we're tilted on one end or the other. We have, com we have been completely apolitical in our, our, our actions. And nobody, absolutely nobody, can speak and show where politics have been brought into the Police Welfare Association. Not then mm -hmm. and not now. Nobody can speak. You would have, some persons would have their opinions, but you know the good thing, the good thing is opinions are not a statement of fact. Not necessarily a statement of fact. Since we've come in, what have we done? We have looked at the immigration department, mm -hmm. that um, has been two years and counting. This probably might be the only issue that we have, you know, really brought on in terms of the membership. In 2017, remember I was president 2013 to 2017. In 2017, right, the Sufra police station was closed. 
shut down, completely shut down. Police officers were asked to vacate the Sufre police station in 2017. Was it political? You understand? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was right before I demoted office of the, the chairman in 2017. So, to, you know, I can say that I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of the executive that I lead. And that every time we sit down, we always say one thing. We act in good faith. And every time executives in the past came to me for advice, I would say to them, anything you do, make sure you act in, in good faith. That you, there's no malice. So I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of my executive members. Every time we sit down at a meeting, this is what it is, good faith. And we say, as long, this is what we say, as long as we are acting in good faith, we are going to move forward. And I have a very, very close knit, very good executive, okay. very strong executive. You understand? So when I speak or when anybody else speak, we speak for everybody. Okay, Mr. President. Um, next question. A document allegedly penned by yourself, Mr. President, has been leaked on social media. This document has displayed concerns of allegations of sexual harassment in the organization. And um, your, you recently did have a press conference with your exec executive. This has caused a lot of discourse within the organization on social media in the public sphere. In your opinion, Mr. President, can you state whether or not you believe that you have handled this situation to acceptable PWA professional standards? Acceptable PWA professional standards. Mm -hmm. Who would be the judge on that? Who would judge that? And who is judging it? Mm -hmm. You know, the Police Welfare Association, as I would have said in the beginning, is there to represent its members, to bring, to make representation on behalf of its members. And its members are from special police constable to inspector. We do not represent anybody else but this group of, of officers. Yes, I believe that we have handled it mm -hmm. to an acceptable to, and to, to the standards of the Police Welfare Association. Issues were brought forward. These issues have been there for the better part of two years. New executive comes in, you receive these issues. And there are other issues that we, re we, we, we receive that had been there. Um, you see, the question came up um, also, Mr. President, because you, you, would, you would accept that, like you said, it was there for the better part of two years. Mm -hmm. You recently took over as PWA. Mm -hmm. um, I know you cannot speak for presidents before, mm -hmm. but the, the actions you have taken, it appears that it was not taken before. What actions before. did I take? Sign a letter. Of course. Or? I cannot say it was not taken before. Ah, okay. I see. It may have done in a different way. So if the president before me, mm -hmm. or the executive before me, met with the then commissioner and brought to his attention the issues that are facing them and they are faced with, are you saying that it was not dealt with? It was dealt with. The difference here is I wrote. That's the only difference. The only difference is I wrote. And that was the question I posed when it was brought to me. Why was there, why is there nothing in writing? But when I was informed that because we had conversation with the then commissioner about it, why you have conversation, you have brought it to his attention, why write again? You understand? But because I had not been able to meet with, I probably would have not have written, you know, had I met with commissioner. Okay. There would, no, there would be no letter. Okay. But since there was no meeting, with Commissioner, I felt it was necessary to pen a document and send it. And even when I penned the document, when I was ready to drop, the, drop it off, Commissioner was out of state. So I had to hold it back for a little while until the Commissioner came back. What I did 
is I copied the, the, the letter to the Office of the Prime Minister as National Security Minister, Home Affairs Minister, and the Public Service Commission. And as I would have said to Commissioner when we spoke about the letter, after she came back and she received it, I said I deliberately, and this is me, I, anything I do, I say I do it. Yeah, because I'm not saying, why would you have to copy it it? to those individuals? Because this situation had been there for the better part of two years. It had not been dealt with. So obviously, some people or somebody was trivializing it. So I copied it to ensure that somebody would act. And this is my only reason for copying it. And I would have said it to Commissioner when we spoke about the letter. Before we take our last break, I'm going to ask you a question, Mr. President. Do you have any personal issues or gripes with the current executive or current acting commissioner of police? I have absolutely no problems with the executive. And I have absolutely never had, never had a problem with the current acting commissioner of police. I could tell you, um, we have worked not in the same department, but alongside each other. We have always had very, very good conversations, always laughed, always cordial. As a matter of fact, probably a few weeks before, a few weeks after I assumed the chair, we met, we spoke, we laughed. Prior to that, every time he saw me or I saw it, he would have called me loud. We would laugh about certain things that, you know, between us we know, so we laugh about it, and we go about our business. So there's never been any feeling of discomfort, any animosity, absolutely nothing that would suggest I never felt it from him, and I don't think he felt it from me that would suggest that there was an issue between us. And there's still no issue as far as I'm concerned. There is still no issue. I will walk up to, you know, Chesterfield. I will write to him, sit until, you know. Would you, the, the action that you've taken, because some people want to know, does the PWA investigate such matters? Mm -hmm. Would you call that an investigation or representation of a member? It cannot be an investigation. And okay. I'll tell you why it cannot be an investigation. A matter is brought to you, to your attention. This matter has been there for the better part of two years. Do you just take it and just run with it? I had to ensure and validate what was being brought to my attention. I had to ensure that it actually came to the Police Welfare Association. So I made the inquiries. Um, I, had, I made the inquiries also from persons who had been at the helm of the organization. When all of these pieces of the puzzle was put together, and I was satisfied that the matter or the reports did reach the Police Welfare Association. It did reach the, 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 the persons who were in, the, in charge of the police force at the time, commissioners. I was satisfied that I could have proceeded in terms of bringing it forward. As a matter of fact, I would have said to those persons who um, that for me to feel comfortable in bringing this matter forward, it needs to be reduced in write to writing. I said it needs to be reduced to writing for me to feel comfortable to ensure that the Welfare Association is protected and that you are protected. And so when I was satisfied, I put my signature to a, a, a document. Okay, we are going to take our final break for this evening's um, show. Not sure if I could take calls tonight. Stay tuned to Police Insight. He got his land loan approved. No deposit, 3.5% interest, and 20 years to repay. Not a bad deal at all. I wish more young people 
would have that feeling. If you are between 21 and 35 years, this is the perfect time to own a piece of St. Lucia with a small share purchase and 20 years to repay. Monrepo Eastern Cooperative Credit Union. Call us today, telephone 455-3370. It's time to celebrate family, friends, and food as you shop with Massey Sir Supermarket and TJ's. May is for mothers and June is for fathers. Each month, one lucky customer will win from every Massey Sir Supermarkets and TJ's. Prizes of a day pass for two at Bay Gardens Beach Resorts. Enjoying poolside relaxation with drinks, food, and spa treatments. Remember to swipe your Massey card and enter with every $100 spent. Terms and conditions apply. Sergeant Zachary Hippolyte here, host Police Insight, real live on Choice Television. In studio with me is the president of the Police Welfare Association, Mr. Carmen Law. Um, Mr. Carmen Law, your executive also um, during the your, your, your very recent um, press conference also brought up the issue of impacts. And I'm sure for some it was kind of surprising because some would believe that this situation or issue was done and dusted and dealt with. But according to you, apparently that's not the case. What's, what's the status of this? Um, it was mentioned, um, Mr. Uh, Hippolyte, Sergeant Hippolyte, because um, I suddenly, I, I don't know, you know, um, and I, I could only say that people have confidence in me. It's the only way I could put it. But um, a statement was made, I think, by the, the, the Prime Minister yeah. about accusations. And we cannot live in a world of... I, I will not... I cannot remember the statement, so I'm not even going to speak of it. But since that happened... Those persons who have been affected by the whole impacts ORC mm -hmm. issue, you know, came to me and, and they were very, very irate at the fact that that statement could have been made. Is that so? And they were saying that they have been languishing for almost 15 years as a result of accusations in the same way. So, uh, after, and the question put to me, and they chastised me, my phone is, is, is littered with, you know, messages as to what is happening to us. Accusations got us here, you know. So what is happening to us? What is going on? And they have asked, they have said, Cameron, you need to find out for us. Please make some representation on our behalf to Those find members out. members have reached out to you. But they have to find out exactly what is the status and what is our status, what is happening to us. And, you know, so this is the one reason, the only reason that it was brought up as a matter of fact. I intend to pen a letter, you know, requesting an update, you know, on behalf of these members as to where it is. Is and we do not even need too much information. Is the investigation still ongoing? Is it completed? Is it if it is completed, you know, what is happening? And, and that's about it. Excellent. Um, are you um, updated with the status of the the construction of the, the new Grosley police station. Are you aware of the status of this? Yes. Um, to a certain extent, we met with, with um, Prime Minister about a month, two months ago, and uh, a few months ago maybe, and we were, she did update us and um, told us that um, at the time, at that time the station was being demolished. So it has been demolished. I work at the Grosley police station mm -hmm. so I could see it has been demolished. The entire place has been, you know, fenced up. Um, I see the equipment in there, so I'm assuming that, you know, work is, is starting or is about to start or will be starting shortly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But there has been activity for the last um, few weeks or months. Mr. President, um, going forward, um, how long would be your tenure? Probably a year. A year? Yeah, um, <laughs> because when I, when I came in, I did say that I did say to the executive at the time and the persons who you know asked me to that I really was not interested. You know, my life was good, great, uh, no stress. Mm -hmm. You know, just going through everything. And um, I was asked to come when I realized that 
the nominations were not forthcoming because I did say to them, if there are enough nominees on the branch board, then I would drop off to allow somebody to assume the role. As I call, I actually called a young lady and said to her, I think you would be a good president, you know, why don't you? And she said, nah, I'm not ready at this time, mm -hmm. you know, probably next time around. And I did try to convince her, but she said she wasn't ready, and that was it. So, it, what, um, under your stewardship, Mr. President, what are some of the things you'd like to accomplish? What are the future plans for the executive of Cameron Law? Uh, um, one, we would like to see, and it has started, we would like to see a transfer policy. Transfer policy. Yes, that, that is absolutely necessary in this force. And if there's one thing that we would like, we would love to see happen is a transfer policy. You understand? We would love to see um, the funds that we manage. We would love to find a way to ensure that it is sustainable at this point. And that is a sore point because we also have a, a scholarship fund, you know, that you would find persons come, up, come on to the, the, these funds, to the, into the police force, and they have not contributed anything much to it, you know, and they have already been benefiting with a full scholarship, five-year scholarship for their for the kids. And I was told by um, the, the office assistant and the treasurer that we have 13 new police officers who just joined mm -hmm. less than... Mm -hmm three or four months ago, or less than six months ago, it just joined. And they already signed up the, the, the kids for the scholarship no. starting September. <laughs> yes, I, I get you. I get starting you. September. Yes, yes. So this is something that you see the, the, we really um, want to see happen. But ultimately, the transfer policy, this is a sore point for the police force. It has been like, like this for a very, very long time. The last set of transfers, you know, although one or two persons, you know, complained to the Welfare Association, but when you sit down among police officers, they speak about it, and they tell you how, you know, it is something that is just not right in the way it is done. So if something is to happen, I think, you know, that and, you know, of course, the sexual harassment policy, I've spoken about it. The region, the Caribbean Federation of Police Welfare Associations, mm -hmm. that is a subject of conversation now. We We would just... Um, seeing how many countries actually have an active policy, okay, okay. you know. So mm -hmm. these are some of the one of some of the things that we intend to, you know, see happen as an executive. Final words, Mr. President, Mr. Cause just very first final words because um, the time is already up. <laughs> you know, I I've always sought to do my best in the role of president of the Police Welfare Association. I represent members. And when you, when you put yourself up to represent people at that level, you have to expect that you are the sacrificial lamb. And I will <laughs> say to those people, nothing that is said outside of the Welfare Association, all the noise and everything, does not affect me. It has never affected me, still does not affect me. I will continue to represent members. I will continue, does not matter the issue. It does not matter who, as, so, as long as I have to make representation and I am acting in good, pay, good faith, I will do it. That is who I am and that is who I will continue to be. So I ask all police officers out there, continue to work hard, continue to produce. Um, it has been difficult, but we have been able to, to manage. COVID was a very difficult thing for us. Mm -hmm. This period is, is still very difficult. Continue to be productive. And, you know, take care of yourselves first before you take care of anybody else. You have to take care of yourself to take care of anybody else. Mr. President, we now have an opportunity to take questions from the public. And there, there are a lot. Um, maybe you could drop by again if, if, if that would be okay with In, you. Invite me. Invite I'm always you. available. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, sir. Um, job well done. And thanks for um, being our guest tonight on Police Insight. Um, so, folks... Um, we have come to the end. Unfortunately, we don't have much time. Uh, Mr. Producer, can we do the birthday shout-out before we end? Okay, thank you so much, Mr. Producer. So I'd like to say um, happy birthday to Kwamika 
Mackenzie Nelson. You are actually celebrating your birthday tomorrow. Yes, you're celebrating your birthday tomorrow. Um, you shall be seven years old, the big seven. So this is birthday greetings coming from um, um, your mommy, Toby. Well, you got two mommies. And how many? Uh, and two mommies, two daddies, two uncles. You're just so special. You have two everything, yeah. So I like to say happy birthday to you. So folks, once again, um, thank you for um tuning in. Usually, I'll big up all my um peeps in the the chat. Sorry, I didn't have the the the, the time to do that. Um, but once again, if if it's a Thursday night on Choice TV, it's Police Insight. Have a good night. Stay tuned. Bye bye.